Hey guys, the following is a conversation that I have with uh, one of the leadership of my guild and nerds, Yami, who has been playing BDO for a really long time, doing a lot of node wars, and he's super involved with a lot of organizing node wars and stuff like that. BDO is going through a big change recently with the way that node wars are going to work. And since I'm playing the game a lot and enjoying it, I wanted to make a video just getting his thoughts from an experienced veteran of playing and organizing node wars for guilds about what he thinks about the new changes. So hopefully it'll be interesting to you guys if you guys play BDO, or maybe if not. Um, the video is just a casual conversation, so perfect if you're grinding or doing whatever to listen to on the side um, or actively. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and uh, I'm looking forward to what this conversation brings. Even with yours, so it should be fun. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. I think we can take it pretty casually. Just kind of like yeah. have fun in chat. So I guess like the first thing that would be the most helpful is um, you're Yami. I play on your am. flex team. <laughs> uh, I've been feeding your flex team for a long time. I thought I was going to get kicked when you sent me the message to send me my life skills. <laughs> I thought it was oh. over. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, so God, that is specifically me. actually driven by the new Node War system. Um, yeah. Everybody else got a little copy paste message, but because I couldn't DM you without being a friend, etc., uh, you didn't get that copy paste message. Nice. Yet. Since then, I've upgraded my cooking to master, and I've got my processing to artisan one. So I've got two more seconds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so you, I guess Yami, as like a a kind of introduction, what? Uh, to what extent have you been doing things like Node Wars? Because my impression is that you've just been playing for a while and you've been pretty involved with like guild stuff, like probably more than the average person really like hands deep in Node Wars from kind of top to bottom, right? Yeah, so I'll kind of, I'll give my little background here. Um, I started playing BDO when it came out. I played closed betas um, and then I didn't play for a little while. I played for like three or four months on launch. I stopped playing. I picked it back up in 2018, played for like another three or four months, didn't play it. Um, and then I picked it back up again in 2020. Um, I played for a while and then I ended up moving across the country. Um, and then I ended up picking it back up again when I got settled in and everything. Um, so I would say my main bulk of my playtime where I've been like every day playing the game, 99% of the progress with that has come from like December of 2020 to now, effectively. Um, so a little over three years straight that I've been playing the game. 2021, sorry. Yeah, December 2021. So a little over two years. Um, in that process, guilds are a big thing on an MMO, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. I've always gravitated towards leadership in guilds more so than just being a guild member. Mm -hmm. um, but I was playing, I joined a guild called Atrex. Um, very quickly became the advisor over there. And then um, Ginger Bear, who you may have met a couple times, was one of the officers that we just picked up. Mm -hmm. And he and I very quickly kind of started just running the show effectively. Mm -hmm. um, the guild's bulk of active core members were people that I recruited. The GM was pretty inactive, um, as some video GMs are. Mm -hmm. We were warring, but it wasn't anything serious. It was just kind of a like pick up and play kind of thing. Um, and there were a bulk of us that wanted to take it more seriously. So I messaged the GM at the time and I said, hey, you know, you haven't been playing much. That's completely fine. People move on, et cetera, et cetera. If you're not interested in playing anymore, that's completely OK. No hard feelings. However, Ginger and I would like to take over and start trying to drive the direction of the guild more directly. Mm -hmm. um, and he basically said, kick rocks. My time in the guild is more important than yours. And GG, if you want to take people and go, go for it. <laughs> Um, so about 45 people left that guild that day um, God damn. out of like the 90 that we had with like 20 of them being kind of just an active life skillers mm -hmm. um, so we ended up making our guild Celestius very shortly after that um, and we picked up those 45 people right away because um, they all came with us effectively Mm -hmm. um, so we knew from Jump that we wanted to be a Node War focused guild, but we did have a lot of players from that Atrex core group who were more PvE focused, didn't mm -hmm. really like PvP very much, would come to the wars if we needed them to, but didn't really want to. Um, so once we kind of got fleshed out, we started recruiting more heavily. 
we got to the point where we were really playing in wars and stuff and like focusing on i was defense lead at the time ginger was shot calling nice um we filled up we were at 100 out of 100 constantly we were so i made a second guild to put kind of our our homies who were pve players that we didn't want to get rid of because we knew and loved them they've been with us for a long time but yeah. we didn't really have space for them in the pvp core of the guild mm-hmm. um and it's a really tough thing to balance like pve players with a competitive pvp environment too yeah. um because you'll get people like well why aren't these people pulling their weight blah 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 but yeah anyway so long story short i made my guild we made a sister guild um we named it eclipse for the alliance and we were warring under that we did t1 t2 for probably about six months i want to say and then in the old system we punched up to what was known as t3 um well it was old t2 because there was no t1 differentiation back then there was a t1 Mm -hmm. beginner and a t1 intermediate um which those are effectively tier one and t2 now Mm -hmm. um and then t2s were what are now t3s so it was higher player caps um things like that so we fought up there for a while we were doing really well actually um And then I ended up getting busy with IRL stuff and ended up not being able to commit as much time to it. And it just kind of came to a point where Ginger and I were like, okay, let's shoot this in the foot before it kind of starts limping until it dies, basically. So Mm -hmm. we ended up kind of parking the guild on one of my alts and it's just sitting there now. But um, yeah, so I, during my time there was defense leading for a while. Then I started shot calling and I shot called for the majority of my time there. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I also did the Diplo stuff, so working with all the other guilds, figuring out politics, balancing team fights, um, all that stuff. So that's where kind of my general knowledge of the overall like large scale gameplay comes in, and the macro of things, and knowing how to read guilds, who's potentially going to hit who, things like that. Because um, mm-hmm. it's essentially psychology at a certain point. Like you yeah. get to know the people, you can kind of predict their behavior. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind mm-hmm. of my background here. So I've been, I would say, seriously PvPing for about two years. Yeah. That's pretty extensive, and that seems pretty involved too. Kind of like all all the aspects. Uh, so I guess like one thing to summarize that experience as we kind of like head into these new systems and what you think is bringing on the changes. Some things that I feel like stand out to me about the Node War system right now is, and I feel like it's reflected in your story is like there's problems with the motivation of the members in a guild. There's problems uh, potentially with just literally the size of the guilds that are required to do node wars. And there's difficulty as well in terms of like leadership organizing the wars just in general. And then as we know, things that you may not have mentioned as much in detail, but the actual like diplomacy of the wars and like setting them up in a way where it isn't just like a rollover right like because my understanding right now is like the wars are kind of whatever right now and it's only really as fun as you can kind of like set up the fights for it right um yeah so effectively the way the pvp in this game has worked for a long time and it's gone through a couple iterations but people are effectively in a situation where up in the upper tiers and this used to be true across the board it was planned team fights every single day, every single node. You used to be able to node every day of the week, didn't matter. Um, there were no lockouts or anything like that. So people would say like, okay, we have these seven guilds that are dropping on this node. This is guild strength one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna balance them off of each other, make a team fight, make rules. Um, we've done a couple of those recently but they're not very common in the T1 and 2 node wars right now that currently exist. They Mm. are very common in the T3+. plus. That's basically what every fight is. Mm. Um, And that's how it used to be across the board. Part of the reason I like T1 and 2 so much right now is that it is not a lot of team fights. It's grab a buddy and run with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, there's a level of consideration that goes into making sure that the people that you're playing with, like you don't want to grab the best two guilds in that tier of node war and jump on a node that has five guilds on it. And three of them are baby guilds and just go fight them. Like it's, there's a certain level of consideration for the other guilds that you're fighting against and making sure that they also have a fair time in the fight. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's nothing in terms of the game mechanics that prevent you. If you would want to just take those two main guilds, the two strongest guilds and just run people down. Mm Hmm. So part of that and the culture that has developed because of it, which is one of the biggest driving motivating factors for the new node war changes that they're doing, 
is Discord is where the majority of Node War preparation, planning, coordination, all of that stuff is done. Mm -hmm. um, I like to say like PA is trying, Pearl Abyss, the game, the company that runs the game, is trying to make your wars one in the game and not in the Discord DMs. Yeah. Um, right now, it's about what fight you can set up, what guild you can coordinate to alliance with, what bases you can nab. And then from there, you kind of, it, it removes a lot of the spontaneity and the technicality and honestly, a lot of the intelligence from the wars, mm -hmm. um, which I'm not a fan of because I like the tactical side of it, strategizing, you know, okay, if we hit this guild now, when that guild dies, who's going to come this way? This guild's fighting this guild. When they go down, where are they going to go? A lot of that stuff goes out the window when it's what's called like politics, which is basically we call it diplo or diplomacy in the game where it's, you know, I'm organizing my guild's fight for this day. And so a lot of the driving factor for the new node war system is I think PA is trying to remove a lot of the back end work that guild masters have to do, because right now on a scale for a large guild in T12, you're looking at probably 20 to 30 hours of extracurricular work outside mm -hmm. of the game to run a node war and guild between getting fights set up, figuring out where you're building, building the base, which has to be done on the second, every single night at midnight EST, when the war goes over, when the base building goes live for the next day, mm -hmm. um, or else you won't get your spot. Um, figuring out your roster, getting people to sign up, planning parties, like all that. Like there's so much that goes into running a node war guild in this game right now that you barely have time to play the game mm -hmm. as just a regular player. And there's varying levels. Some people do more effort than others. Um, it's just a matter of how much you want to set your guild up for success. T12 is a little harder because the average player base skill level is a little lower, so it requires mm -hmm. a little more hand-holding. Um, upper end guilds can just kind of jump on a node like show doesn't matter they don't really have to coordinate very much they just drop people yes up and they just go kill everybody mm -hmm. um, yeah but i guess i would say that like it's kind of the comparison is kind of a little offset because of course the people who are in a guild like Cho, they've been doing this for so long right that there's probably mm -hmm. a lot of things that they just understand um and when it's just the top guild that you're looking at, right? Like, I think that organization is a lot smoother just because they've do, been doing it for a while. And of course, Absolutely. when you have like T1s and T2s where ideally, which I think is probably a good thing for the game, right? Where you can get more people playing, um, which is going to include new people. If you have a system that makes it hard for new people to kind of like find the guild to get in or like have guild mm -hmm. leaders in the T1, T2 region that would even be willing to like set up a fight or feel like it's worth the effort yep. to set up a fight. It's got to be a little bit more chaotic. And so a system that kind of like helps them just get started and get playing the game is probably a good thing. Exactly. And that's the thing. The barrier of entry to node wars has always been pretty high due to, I would say like synthetically created issues from players with the politicking, um having a reputation to be able to coordinate enough to get a fight because the way it works right now say you make a guild tomorrow mm -hmm. and you're like okay i want to take my guild we're going to be a t3 guild and by some miracle of nature you get 70 players that all are like okay let's go and you drop on a node and there's a bunch of guilds on that node those five six seven eight guilds that are there for their team fight mm -hmm. that becomes an 8v1 mm -hmm. And the way it always works with team fights is you clear the node, then you run your fight. So right. the guilds that are there for their team fight are going to kill whoever is not involved in their politics and then start playing. So while that is what makes sense for their political situation, it makes it very hard as a new member, new guild, new players to just get into the large scale PVP because you have to play the political game on Discord to have mm -hmm. any relevance in the in-game wars, which is something that this change and the amount of back-end work and stuff like that, this change eliminates like 90% of the chance of people creating the current system that exists with how much you have to do in Discord to be able to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it sounds like kind of like the arms race of Diplo. If you're not playing the Diplo game, then you're kind of like pushed out of the war. And so that kind of like forces everybody to into this meta, this meta activity where they're having to like go on Discord and like, cast their lot in th this game of politicking correct yeah yeah because it's either you join them or you just don't have content because you get zerged off and mm -hmm. in the current system means you get locked out which if that happens on a sunday you can't war again until the following sunday mm -hmm. all right so like 
jumping into the actual changes themselves now can can we show mm -hmm. this uh document that you sent me yeah i don't mind at all it's all stuff that was published in global labs for the most part all right watch out for the flashbang because it's very very bright <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of information here, but I think it's probably better to kind of like start from where you think like the fundamental changes are. And then I think we'll talk about how this addresses the things that you talked about in terms of like, okay, which changes do you think are like best suited to help with like the, um, the, the meta activity stuff, the diploing and kind of like the, the startup cost of trying to get into node wars. Mm -hmm. And then and then maybe we could just kind of like discuss some of the side effects of like, okay, now the wars are going to feel good because of this. They're going to feel a little less good because of these things. And then maybe these yeah. things are question marks, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'll start with a very quick like breakdown of how wars currently work for anyone who's not aware. Um, <clears throat> effectively, the way it goes now, there's the map is broken down into nodes within regions. And then each of those nodes, you get benefits from holding it um, with like drop rate chances and the, the grinding areas for that node. Um, but effectively, the way it works now from start to finish, you get your guild, you get your guild members. You drop a base, which is done the night before generally the node is fought on because there's not enough to go around for the most part. And you want to be on a node that's going to be competitive because if you're a node-worn guild, you want to actually have a fight. Um, mm -hmm. So... Midnight EST, an hour after the previous night's war time frame ended, is when you drop your fort. Mm -hmm. The next day, the war starts at 9 p.m. EST. So there's about an hour of prep before the war for people to get their guild members online, mark that they're participating, get their parties broken out, get everybody into the parties, get the platoons formed, get to their base. You have to build your base the night before. Um, so there's a lot of preemptive stuff before you're even boots down on the ground. Mm -hmm. From there, you have to keep your fort alive while being the last one alive on the node, effectively. So you're working on offensively killing other people's bases while defensively making sure that your base stays alive. And the last base alive on the node captures the node. Mm -hmm. Then once you capture your node, you get your individual player rewards. The guild gets some money as a whole into their guild funds. Um, the way the new system is going to work, an hour before war is starting, or up to an hour before war is starting, you're going to be able to say, okay, we are participating in this war. Mm -hmm. Each of the wars, instead of being broken out node by node, is now broken out region by region. Mm -hmm. So if you look on the line five there, row five on the left side up the top, um, Balanos and Serendia are two of the regions in the game. That's going to be the beginner nodes, which are going to be the current T2 APDP caps. Mm -hmm. And is T1 just nukes? Five man, yes, correct. Yeah, T1 mm. caps are gone. Um, this is effectively what's going to be called the new T1s, but it's just Balanos and Serendia are the regions. So that's mm. going to be where Pelia is, where Heidel is, that whole area um, on the north and south, the inner player area of the map generally. Mm -hmm. Past that, there's Medaya and Valencia, which are going to be to the east side of the map. Those nodes are going to be 70 mans with the current T4 damage caps, mm. uncapped HP all that stuff. Um, and then the T3 nodes, the Calpheon, Cam, Sylvia, are going to be 100 players with uncapped gear. Oh, interesting. Now, this is, a, this is a large part of contention for a lot of people because nobody is pulling 100 people every single day. Yeah. Um, so the big push right now from the top end is to get the player caps lowered. Mm -hmm. I think the T1 cap is fine. The Balanos Serendia 35-man cap, that gives enough room for where active guilds can get their people in without having to wait list 40 people every single day mm -hmm. um, while also having a low enough cap that it's approachable for newer guilds to kind of get in there and get a feel for it. Mm -hmm. um, Medaya Valencia is a little too high. That needs to probably come down to about a 50 to 55-man cap to pe get people happy. And then the top, top end cap should be about 70 um, for like people that want to play on those caps. Mm. the it way the system is interesting oh sorry go ahead sorry to interject it is kind of interesting because i feel like the caps for people might work out but just as a side note it seems interesting that the higher end of the game which i would assume have fewer players playing in it have the larger caps i feel like there would be less people but maybe they're more active right just something to yeah say. so it's actually it's kind of surprising um the upper end of the game right now 
there are players that are if their guild has a hundred slots, they're competitive enough that a hundred of those slots are taken up by active node warring members. Mm. Whereas guilds in our ranks, like down on the lower end of things, they may have a hundred players in their guild, but realistically like 50 or 60 of them actively yeah, they actually show up, um, yeah, which then means that out of that 50 and 60, how many are you going to have on that given day? Um, mm-hmm. Whereas the hundred man sieges on Saturdays, they will have the issues we have where it's like, okay, we have no more slots. Like FFA is full. Everyone mm-hmm. showed up, GG. Um, yeah. So that that hundred man cap, you would think that there's a smaller player pool, but they're more actively dedicated to the large scale PvP on that top end um, right. than like the average T one two guild is. Yeah, but you're still saying that it's going to be exhausting if that's a hundred every day, as compared yes. to like siege, which is like once a week. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the mentality that Perlibus has. In- like yes the maximum you can have is 100 but the average that people are actually bringing to that content is not going to be 100 Mm -hmm. um but a couple important notes that changed in this war that make these caps important this new node war system previously t1s the 35 mans in the new system were not available on tuesdays and thursdays they Mm -hmm. are now available six days a week every tier is available from sunday to friday so another note with that is previously you could only take up to three nodes per week. There is no longer a cap on how many nodes you can capture per week. So theoretically, you can capture you show up, up to one a, a day. Yeah, you could realistically show up six days a week and actively participate in this content. Mm-hmm. Um, the only restriction that currently exists for ward days is that if you take a castle, which means you won siege on Saturday night, there's four castles in the game that you can take: Balanos, Calfion, Serendia. Or not Serenity, sorry, Bal- uh, three castles, sorry. Um, Balanos Castle, Calfion Castle, and then Camasilvia or Valencia Castle, sorry, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take one of those, you're only able to tar- participate in Node War two days that week. Got it. Um, that exists as a restriction in the current system, and from what we're seeing is carrying over into the new system. However, Siege reworks are probably on the way as well, based on some of the things they've talked about publicly in Dev Talks. Mm-hmm. Um, but this new system, um, when you're ready to get into like the meat of it, I can talk about why it's a lot more approachable for new players. Do you have another like kind of pointed direction here? Yeah, no, I think this all sounds good. So as kind of like a summary from what, I, what I'm understanding is that they're kind of squashing the different tiers so that there's not as many differentiations. The beginning tier is the 35 man. It's going to be in the two areas of Balnos and Serendia. And then there's Medaya Valencia. And then there's Calfion and Camasilvia. And they're just happening every day, basically. Correct. Yep. Yeah, that's a good summation. The key details of this whole thing. Let's let's dive a little bit deeper because there's a lot. Yeah. So a lot of this is fluff. Um, let me. I'll get into the document real quick because mm-hmm. I can kind of highlight cells which will show up on your stream. The number of forts. The way the new system is going to work is that when you drop on a node, say five guilds say, okay, we're dropping on Balanos Serendia. Mm-hmm. You are no longer able to specifically drop where you want to. It is going to assign you one of those two regions. Oh, interesting. Then so we with, not, we're not going to choose Balanos or Serendia. We're just going to... You're Balanos. We're picking here. both. Yeah, we're saying I want to be on Balanos, Serendia with the 35 man caps, and they will assign us to which tier or which region we're going to fight in that day. Got it. Um, you find that out 15 minutes before war. <laughs> cool. I think this is an anti-politicking modality, to be honest with you. I think they're yeah. trying to give people as little time possible to try to last-minute politic while also making it reasonable for people to be able to get their members prepared. Right. Um, another important change, I don't know if we'll interface with this very much, but this one Merc, in the current upper tiers of wars, you're allowed to bring in a mercenary, which in Black Desert Online is someone that you can recruit into your guild temporarily that can fight for you in a node war. Mm-hmm. A lot of the upper end guilds do what's called Merc trials, where instead of doing like a trial in a battle arena where we do yeah, we one v one people, on. they take you to a war and see how you do. Um, mm-hmm. We're allowed to have one mercenary per war now in the new system. Mm-hmm. Um, the seventy mans get three, the one hundred mans get five. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you drop, you get selected. You select your regions. It puts you in a region. The number of guilds that get into that region, it can be a maximum of 30 per region. So Balanos and Serendia have a total of 60 guilds between the two of them that could sign up and get into it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
if you have a f- group of 30 guilds, if you look in this graphic here, um, the very last line, the number of guilds confirmed to participate in each territory ranges from a minimum of one to a maximum of 30. The number of castles activated accordingly ranges from a minimum of one to a maximum of 15. So the way this is going to work is that it is going to be a number of bases divided by half of the current guilds rounded down. Got it. So if there's three guilds on the node, there's going to be one fort. Um, So forts are spawning now on the node in random locations within a set configuration, I'm sure, Mm -hmm. depending on how many guilds are there. Each of these bases is going to have a timer assigned to it. Mm-hmm. And you have to axe the base or axe the four down or break the fort effectively to gain control of it. It starts with a neutral health bar. Got it. Once you kill that fort, your guild, whoever drill, deals the last strike to it, gets control of that fort. From that point, you are then able to build out flame towers, defensive measures, um, things of that nature to get your fort defensible. And there's a timer. So say that we're on a fort, right? And it has mm-hmm. a 10 minute timer. If we hold the fort for seven minutes and then we die, and then the next guild takes it, they have to hold it for the three remaining minutes to be oh, able to God. gain control of it and win. So okay. the guild that has control of the fort when that timer runs out is going to be the guild that wins the fight on that node. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, we will be fighting on the entire region. Mm-hmm. So if we're fighting on a fort on Bloody Monastery, right? Mm -hmm. and bloody monastery's fort gets captured we can just go fight on a different fort Mm -hmm. we can go over to castle ruins and fight on the fort on castle ruins instead the way that the rewards are going to work um this next image down here one down Mm -hmm. is going to be the amount of time that a fort is assigned before it is like captured Mm -hmm. determines the amount of value that you're going to get from it right so the minimum time a fort can be spawned is 10 minutes and the maximum is 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. There's going to be another fort on there with a question mark that the end time is unknown, and that will have the highest rewards out of any base. But you don't know how long you have to hold it for or when it's going to end. So a few questions here. Mm-hmm. So from what I understand, when you drop, let's say we drop into Balanos and there's like eight guilds or whatever, that means there will be four forts in each of these... Correct are captured in what you talked about, where you basically kill the neutral health bar and then you try to hold it for what is a random distribution of time between 10 minutes and 60 minutes? Correct. Okay. And the time will be displayed on the fort when it is neutral. And also the remaining time will be held, if you look on the uh, right side on the lower portion here, um, there is the demonstration of this UI. Uh, You're going to have a widget, basically. uh, Here, this one that I'm moving around. There's going to be a widget that's going to show what bases are neutral, which bases are occupied, which bases are liberated. And the remaining is not like the health will not be displayed, but it will tell you how much time is left on that fort and which guild has control of it, Hmm. Um, which is really interesting. So you can kind of open your map and get a quick view. And it looks like this is just going to be on the right side of your screen on the world map. Yeah. Um, So you can open your map and check kind of what the region is looking like, what bases have what amount of time left. If there's like a weak guild holding a base with like two minutes left and we're like, okay, we're going to go kill them and take it. Mm -hmm. um, That's where you're going to get the most, most of your information. So with the one fort that has the unknown end time, do we know what that's going to look like on this widget? Like, is it unknown even after you take it? You just have to stay there until it randomly finishes? Correct. Yeah. I would imagine it's probably just not going to have a bar um i think on the right side there are those bars that are like ticking down at various levels the yellow circle around the node icon is most likely going to be the remaining timer Mm -hmm. um so i would think that the two that are there are probably already captured i can't read or write korean but Mm -hmm. the two that are there are probably already captured i would imagine that the one that is an unknown timer may just not have a status bar around it at all either i feel like the one thing that's standing out here is uh i feel like there's a lot of question marks to because you can basically have your fort snipe from under you, right? Like you have mm-hmm. a 10 minute timer, you hold it for nine minutes, 59 seconds, and then somebody takes it at the last second, then you lose out on that fort, right? Yep. Um, do we know at all how that's, how, is it just like the killing blow on the stick? Is that what the size is? Yeah. Um, so it's going to be the killing blow on the stick will give control of the fort. 
Hmm. Um, and then from there, the timer will start counting down. You can do your reinforcements, things like that. But remember, in most cases, this is going to be under pressure of other guilds. Um, yeah. Now, an important designation here and something that is makes this a little bit more digestible, I think, for smaller guilds is that the outer areas on the region, the forts are worth less rewards than the inner areas in the region. So mm. the further you are to the perimeter of the region, the lower the rewards for those forts are going to be. So I would imagine in most cases, right, the stronger guilds should be fighting for the bigger pot. Mm -hmm. So the smaller guilds should be able to play on the outsides, the outskirts of the node, take a low timer for it, get in, get out with their fort, win for the day, get their money, get their rewards, and move on from there. Mm -hmm. Um Another thing with this as well is that um, individual player stats are going to play into your rewards that you receive. Oh, crazy. So points are going to be calculated by a number of variables. Um, one of the variables is player kills. Uh huh. Uh, killing a fort is worth 20 points, killing a player is worth one point. The top 20% of people in the guild are going to be given higher rewards than the other 80% of the guild that participated hmm. um, on an individual basis. So it's not just about like winning the objective of the game. There's like a quality of how you win. Correct. Yeah. And I think there's going to be a lot of gamifying. Um, one thing that I'm excited for in this is it allows a lot more versatility in play style, mm -hmm. not only as a guild, but just day to day. Even if we decide like, okay, we want to just play purely offensive today. We're going to focus on destroying other people's forts. We're not really going to look to capture one early in the war. We don't want to be tied down to trying to defend something. Um, and nobody, most guilds don't want a 10 minute war, right? Yeah. Um, you would imagine that 10 minute fort's probably going to be relatively contested and that 10 minute timer, depending on who takes it, they may not hold it that long. Um, but we could be like, okay, we're going to take no forts today. We're going to focus on strictly being offensive. We're going to practice ball fighting. We're going to practice pushing a base, destroying structures, stacking flame towers, whatever the case may be. The next day we can say, okay, we're going to focus on defense. So we're going to try and get in there. We're going to try and take a high timer fort early and see how long we can hold it mm -hmm. and start mm -hmm. practicing defensive plays. And then if we lose our fort, there's no penalty. We're not going to get knocked out. Right. We don't die at that point. We just don't have control of the fort, which means we can't win. So we have to get control of a different one. Right. Right. Interesting. So it allows, yeah, it allows a lot more like tactician kind of ability to play to what you want your guild to be working on that day. Like instead of throwing a BA practice where we have to emulate walking around and all <laughs> yeah. that stuff, we can just sign up for a war that day on our off day and just say, okay, we're going to go practice offensive ball fights on this region and we're mm -hmm. just going to sign up for it. 35 people sign up, get in there, you get some rewards and we get to focus on practicing while not necessarily worrying about if our base is going to die and if we're going to get locked out and all that. Mm -hmm. So would you say that this is a pretty complete look at like the game mode in its entirety or are there, are there a few other key details that we should talk about? Um, this will be a pretty complete look. I grabbed all of the things that were like relevant to changes. Um, I didn't grab some of the other things that were really big changes. Uh, there's a couple notes in here, like you can place your tent anywhere on the server at any time now. Um, so so there's no more restriction down? on making sure you have to get your tent up before. <laughs> yep. um, horses are going to respawn automatically with the player. Okay. Um, you so are going to be no able to... Correct. Yeah, there's going to be a supply depot anymore. You're able to spawn um, this one here if you scroll down a little bit below the image. The resurrection now is going to be that you can spawn at any town within the region that you're fighting on, and your horse mm. will automatically revive with you. Um, mm. So if we are all fighting a base that's near a town, we're going to spawn back at that town. We'll go back out there. Mm. Um, but there's no more supplies. There's nothing like that. Um, respawn timers are going to be at 10 seconds to start. They'll increase to a maximum of 30. So there's not going to be any mm -hmm. more one minute respawn timers or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and the one second for each minute of base battle progress will be added on. And then an additional one second for every number of death. Mm -hmm. So up to 30 seconds effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, so if war has been going on for 15 minutes and you've died 15 times, your respawn timers at their, their 30 seconds. Sure. Okay. Um, so I think this is probably a good point to just kind of like, I guess, 
let's let's try to summarize all those points. So essentially, I can say that the Node War is now kind of like a ca- king of the hill kind of thing, and there are multiple mm-hmm. hills, and you don't ever really get eliminated from the Node War. It basically ends when the 60 minutes of the Node War is over, or if you successfully capture a fort by winning the King of the Hill for that particular fort. Is that correct so correct. far? Yep. Okay. And then the reviving is just in towns, and you revive with your mount, and so you basically don't really have any kind of like outpost per se. You're just like reviving in the towns in the region. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah. You're, uh, there are flags, though. You still will be able to place flags. Okay. Um, a couple of important distinctions. So Elephant is back in the game now for the lower tier. Mm-hmm. It was removed from everything but T3 Plus in the current Node War system. Elephants will be relevant again, um, as well as Hawatches, which is basically like a planted ballista that you can use at your base that you can shoot a, an array of projectiles out of, basically, with high player damage on them. Mm-hmm. Um and then <clears throat> you will be able to use annex kits whether you own a fort or not to mm-hmm. drop certain things. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't break it down too heavily in this document because I was trying to kind of keep bullet points. But yeah, you can place outposts. You're allowed up to two cannons per guild, um, and the cannons do not require a cannon observatory. They don't have to be crafted or anything like that in the observatory. You just buy them from the guild manager, mm-hmm. um, and you can run two at a time, Got up it. to two at a time. You can just constantly have cannons pocketed, and then you drop two, they die. you drop another two, they die. Yep, exactly. Got it. Got it. And then, yeah, so you will still be able, you still will be able to use flags to kind of get your spawn a little closer mm-hmm. to whichever fort you're fighting off of. Um, you can drop, surprisingly and weirdly enough, you can drop a flame tower even if you don't own a fort. <laughs> um, I guess which you is can kind protect of weird. your flags stuff but yeah, yeah you can protect flags with it but it costs 500 million in guild funds which if people don't have a relative idea of what that means in terms of bdo um it won't mean much but effectively most guilds have anywhere from like 10 to 15 billion guild funds at any given time so 500 million it's quite a lot for just one structure is quite a lot when you own a base the cost of that goes down to like 10,000 silver Okay. Um, so you can use them if you're in like a big risk reward situation and you're like, okay, we really want this fort, but we don't think we're going to be able to pull it off without getting this flame tower placed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's an option you can do there. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. So that's the, that's the general idea of the whole new system. Let's kind of like take that and take a step back and talk about what do we, what do we think about that? <laughs> how, how do we feel about it? So personally, I can understand. Um, unfortunately, you know, BDO players are inherently doom and gloom. Um, mm-hmm. sure. And the company doesn't have a very good track record of giving us changes that we, one, ask for, or two, agree with. Um, mm-hmm. However, this change in particular, I know a lot of people are excited about. I don't think it's necessarily what I would call like the foot soldiers that are excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but because of all of the variables and like circumstances that I mentioned earlier, a lot of leadership is excited about it. Not having to play Discord Simulator twenty hours a week to be relevant in Node Wars, being able to just drop us like drop on a region, pick a fort, go, mm-hmm. um, all of that stuff. It makes it much more approachable and enjoyable. They did reduce war times. Couple two more changes that they made that I forgot to mention. So war mm-hmm. times are going now from a maximum of two hours to a maximum of one hour. Mm-hmm. Um, And they also are going to be starting an hour later than they previously did. Mm -hmm. I like that because basically if we had a long war, war would be finishing when it's going to finish anyway, but we get an extra hour after what is most people's work day between eating dinner, things like that before having to be there for war. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do like the extra hour up front instead of being on the tail end because like, you know, you can use that time however you'd like, but I like having more time between my after hour activity and my work day. Sure. Um, I personally think that this change is going to be healthy for the general state of the game. I think that what Pearl Abyss is trying to achieve is a cultural shift Mm -hmm. from being a very hardcore. And this is seen through many of the changes that they've been making lately with quality of life, things like that. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to make this game more approachable for a new player with less grindiness, less like 
one of the anecdotes I like to give or phrases I like to say is most MMOs operate in a perspective of thousands of hours of gameplay, whereas B- BDO operates in a tens of thousands of hours of gameplay. Yeah. Um, has been how I've previously viewed it. Um, I'm about to hit 10,000 hours on the yeah. game and my account is nowhere near complete. And I know Alex, our guild master has tripled that. She's at like 30,000 hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and granted, there's a lot of AFKing in the game through life skilling, things like that. But sure. PA is think is trying to just make the game more digestible and accessible to everybody. So they're trying to decrease the amount of time commitment needed to be able to participate in the large scale PVP. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they're just trying to make the large scale PVP lighter inherently. Mm-hmm. Um, they're trying to make it so that it is more fun. It's easier to approach. You don't have as much invested. So if you do in the current system, go out in five minutes, you feel awful. You're not able to war for the rest of the week. You spent realistically probably a couple hours even planning the fight that you just got knocked out of in five minutes. Right. This system is going to be so much better in terms of being able to just casually sign up for those wars, get into them, have fun, try to win the node, find a base that you like to take. Mm-hmm. It's nice too because it's going to be a lot more variable because it's going to mix up the placements of bases. They're going to be randomized on the node. Mm-hmm. The timers of bases is going to be randomized. So I think that there's going to be a lot more variation in the day to day feel of wars than there is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's going to be more exciting in that regard, on top of being just overall less weight and commitment to every single day that you're participating in them. Mm-hmm. I personally have been very optimistic about these changes for a long time as someone who was involved in what goes into making the yeah. wars and getting things that I like. And also with my situation with Alex, like I see how much effort goes into it from her and how much stress yeah. she has. So I'm, I'm excited from that perspective that things are going to be tapering down on that end. Yeah. Um, and I think overall, it is just a much healthier change for the culture and the community in the game, which is what mm-hmm. they've really been striving for. Yeah. Um, and I think they just want more organic PvP. They just want the game to be where you win your fights and not through DMing the right person on the right day to get the right fight set up. Like just right. just have fun. Right. Um, there's chances for this system to be exploited. I'm not gonna say what I think would be the easiest way to do so in terms of <laughs> politicking on here, because I don't want it to be something that is taken from this and <laughs> then tried. It. We should spread um, it. Yeah, no. I've I've been theory crafting pretty heavily into what I think would be the best way to exploit this if people do try to do it to know how to combat it the best, but it definitely is possible, but it would require coordination of a lot of people. Um so I do think that overall this change will be positive. I think that it's going to make it a lot more fun. Um, mm-hmm. it, op- it opens up more opportunities to play the game in other areas of content while also being an active war player mm-hmm. due to the lack of time commitment, things like that that are changing. Um, so yeah, I think overall, I think it's going to be a nice, healthy, active change for the game that's going to drive in more players and make the large-scale PvP in the game a little bit more digestible and approachable for smaller guilds and newer players. Mm-hmm. What do you, uh, so one thing that I feel like is super true is that I talked to Toronto Blue Jays yesterday, and the funny thing is, he also started playing in 2020, and I think we all know, mm-hmm. I feel like there's going to be a lot of BDO players who started in 2020, because oh, of, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah, but it was just interesting because I was thinking about it, I'm curious how many people in Nerds, I'm really curious how many people in Nerds started in like late 2023, or basically, I basically started playing in 2024, but I feel like I feel like I'm a rarity in the game. Like, I, I don't think there are many people who are just like, I'm new and I'm like getting into playing the game. Yeah, I will say, I think from my pers- my experience, um, a couple things. So BDO went through a publisher changeover at a certain point, and this was around 2020, um, which was originally what got me back into the game because they were emailing anybody with an active account, I'm assuming because of legality reasons. Right. And they were saying, hey, your data will be deleted if you do not complete this migration process by X date. Mm -hmm. Um, So any accounts that were created when the game was started in 2016 was when it had its North America launch, 2014 in Korea. Any accounts that were created in that time frame, so from 2016 to roughly 2020, uh, mid it was like May 2020, if you did not do the small private, it was like a a couple clicks on a website. If you did not Mm -hmm. do that progress or process, your account was deleted. Jesus. I think more so than new players, what BDO had returning players, Mm. um, people who were playing the game previously, it didn't go well for them. It was too grindy. The RNG system and gearing where your gear has a chance of blowing up. It's hard to make progress. All that stuff was too much for them to digest. They stopped. And then 
PA has been making great strides in terms of quality of life, making the process easier, making it so it's more guaranteed in the gearing system. I think people who see all those changes are more excited to try and give the game a shot because the game is very unique in its action combat system. Mm-hmm. Um, it is also one of the biggest flaws in the game, unfortunately, due to the way that netcode works and latency and things like that. Yeah. But it is the most unique MMO in terms of its combat. It plays like a fighting game. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is something I think that drives people the most. They're working on making it much better and adding more PVE content into on the high end and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> so they're they're making the right strides. I do think I agree with you. I don't think they're they're a organically brand new players in the game. I think that the majority of it is either people that picked it up on console and then got a PC and wanted to move over mm-hmm. here because the game's a little bit more complete. Or people that played the game previously stopped playing it due to various reasons and then now came back and are like, okay, I'm going to try it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think that overall, in my experience, recruiting for both my guild, other guilds I've talked to, knowing as many GMs as I know, um, I don't think that there are many like, okay, this is my first hit on this game. I'm going to mm-hmm. install it for the very first time, make a brand new account. I don't think that that exists a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say, yeah, I think it is a rarity to be someone who started in like late 2023, early 2024. Mm-hmm. So I guess, uh, you mentioned not wanting to talk about the exploits, so we won't, mm-hmm. we won't need to super go there because I'm sure there are a few things and probably honestly, PA is at some point, PA is probably going to need to, I'm sure they're things. aware. Yeah, yeah. I think that they are aware. I don't, it's not necessarily exploits in terms of the mechanical side of things, but it is. Things just that like could a bad be faith way of playing politically the game. to basically yeah gamify the war system as it's currently going to be released um, and make it so that you kind of guarantee that you get a piece of the pie every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so- I they'll probably address them as they go on if it becomes an issue, but unfortunately those things are usually like the community has to sort them out um, yeah. by either you know killing the guilds that are doing it, not working with them, etc. But it goes back to politics. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Sadly, yeah. so. I, I mean, in a, in an MMO, I think there's especially for like a node war siege kind of MMO, right? I feel like it's hard to escape that, right? It's People, unavoidable. It's, yeah, it's kind of part of the territory. Uh, but putting that aside a little bit, I guess, like, what would you say are your potentially least favorite parts of the changes, if there are any? Um, I think that it was originally. I don't like that it removes some of the like intricacy of reading other people's gameplay and things like that and like playing to what you think your strengths will be um in the way that we currently run our fights it's nice because it's kind of unpredictable mm-hmm. um but you always will somewhat interact with everybody that's on your node in the new system there's a chance that we may never see guilds that are dropped on the same yeah. region as there's a random pocket region. And it's some... very large yeah um I don't like the the fact that you can basically play to let someone else run your timer out and then kill them off the fort and take it and then yeah, basically kind of like take control them. of it and yeah. just like yeah you can it's like bidding on eBay right like you can yeah. try to snipe the auction at the last second. Um, I think that that is going to be I think my least favorite part about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that and just the psychology of the macro stuff goes away a lot because not everybody has to interact with each other as much as they're forced to in the current system. But that is also one of the biggest pros of the system. Sure. Um, yeah. So it's I've had a hard time finding things that I don't like about it. The shorter war time, I think an hour being the maximum is a little short for me. I think 90 minutes would be healthier. Two hours can be a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if a fort is a 60 minute fort, you it's going to come down to whoever has control of that fort when the timer of the war runs out right because if the fort spawns at minute zero and it takes five minutes for the guilds that are fighting it for one of them to finally take it that means you have 55 minutes left in the war but 60 minutes left on that fort Mm. so you're going to have to then try to hold it for those 60 minutes if you get knocked off then you know it's so the fort's not going to last yeah exactly um so I do think my least favorite thing is how obvious it is to be like, okay, well, if we want this fort, we're just going to let them do the hard work and hold it and we'll just kill them. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do think that that is one of the more interesting sides because you can kind of play to the weaknesses of the guild that you're fighting. Mm -hmm. And it adds a certain layer of strategy as well to where it's like, okay, 
what do we think is our margin of safety with this guild in terms of either holding this fort defensively? Like how many minutes do we think we can hold it for? And how quickly do we think that we can kill them? Mm -hmm. If we mm -hmm. let them hold it until it's a minute and a half, are we going to have the time to kill them and take it back? Or do we kill them at a minute and then lose the ability to do it? I'm sure mm -hmm. you can strip them and leave them with like 5% HP. Um, I think that's what it's going to be. I think that a lot of people will probably get the four really low and then back off mm -hmm. and let the timer run down. Um, but you have to be able to reliably like stop the people trying to repair it because tapping is still going to be a thing. Yeah. Um, which is why I was verifying the tap times and all that stuff for everybody. But I do. I think that my least favorite thing is I think it's going to be very predictable what the meta is going yeah. to become. Well, to the win. interesting thing about what you mentioned about that strategy is that it that actually has another layer of risk because if you get them down to five percent of their full strip and then you someone back else off, comes someone in. else comes yep. in and now they're five percent yep. strip right and then they take the fort and now you're like well now the fort's back and there's a different guild right <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i think it'll be interesting i think i'm i'm hopefully optimistic about it i think that the game is in a state where this change is very welcome um, mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a uniform consensus across everybody to the point that I have now with like everyone is tired of what the current system is. Mm -hmm. um, and usually in my experience with node war changes, I've been through about three iterations of them in my time playing the game. Mm -hmm. People cry the second they're mentioned. They <laughs> throw fits. They post on the forums. They get upset. Um, they threaten to quit. PA gets scared because it's like, oh, well, now most of our active player base is complaining. The only complaint I've heard from this on a real level is just the player caps. People just want right. to see the player caps come down. They don't like the number of people that they have to pull on the upper end, and they mm -hmm. don't like the T4 caps because on that cap, you are prone to just dying immediately. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it'll be good. It'll be healthy. I think that it'll be a good friendly change for the game. I think that it'll open the door for a lot of newer players to mm -hmm. get more comfortable. Smaller guilds can approach it and kind of play for the outskirts. Um, and nobody's penalized for just participating in the content. You don't need to set up some big intricate fight or make sure you have a safety net to be able to participate without getting locked out and wasting everybody's time. I, I think that's going to be the biggest, most positive thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're kind of like a smaller or more novice guild, you can kind of just like get in and have some large scale PvP experience. Even if you don't really take a fort, at least you're there and you're not getting like knocked out, right? You can kind of exactly. like get your feet on the battlefield and just kind of like yep. play yeah. and um, realistically you shouldn't be fighting for the same things that the bigger guilds are fighting for. right you could go to a quarter of the map and try to take a take a four on that if that's what you wanted to do but i'm sure exactly. there are a lot of guilds that want would i'm sure there are a lot of guilds that probably want to get some kind of reward and get out but i'm sure there are also a lot of guilds that kind of want to fight a little bit regardless of what the rewards are just because they kind of want to see what it's like to do like a node war Yep. Yep. A hundred percent. And I think that's a really nice way. This is one of the, I didn't expect the execution of this system to be as well thought out as it is when they originally announced it. Yeah. Um, I was hopeful for it because I'm kind of just tired of what it is, but I do think that their current, the way that they did it allows for everybody to participate in the content in their own way. Mm -hmm. without being penalized for it and mm -hmm. there's no real need to play the game of oh well if i don't talk to these people they're going to kill us blah blah because blah, you can't be killed if you mm -hmm. want to just run around on the node for an hour and practice fighting people and judge your strength against other guilds and practice your player positioning and stuff you can do that mm -hmm. it's great you, you don't have to worry about getting locked at your base or locked out of the war or anything so mm -hmm. i do i think that overall they did a great job with it. i'm hopeful for it i'm excited for it um, and I just look forward to it being implemented and hope that the community as a whole doesn't try to do what they have done in the past historically and loophole their way into making it so that they have right. control over how the content works. I feel like uh, in my experience in different gaming communities and just in the kind of like world of gaming itself, I feel like that is a tendency for populations, though. Like, usually we play games to try to break them <laughs> and try to find loopholes. It, it, can, it can be hard yeah. I think, to stop that. Yeah. Yeah. And mechanically breaking it or even like setting themselves up to win in the best way possible. I'm okay with, I just hope that because the general consensus that I've seen from people is that they just want more like not lazy fun, but they want less effort required to be able to be competitive. Yeah. Well, and if it's definitely they go the... into Mm -hmm. it's definitely on the exaggerated end of the spectrum for like how you prepare for a node war right now right yeah like yep 
it is a ridiculous amount of effort right now to even get into a node war. So I think it's a reasonable statement to be like, hey, we need a system that carries more of the weight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Well, there's just one last thing that I think would be interesting to just generally talk about. Are there any problems outstanding about Node War or PvP that you would like to see fixed or important problems that you think kind of like aren't addressed or need to be addressed? Um, I think that I... My biggest thing right now is there's a lot of the PvP in the game that has been currently like quote-unquote preseason or testing phases mm. um, because they're working on a large-scale rework, um, but that's been in the process for about six-plus months in terms of class protections and the way that they're going to interface because they're trying to make it so certain classes aren't punished as much in the player versus environment side of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously when you're balancing a large scale competitive player versus player side of the game with that, there's certain things that need to come into consideration. Um, but AOS like arena of Solaire, or three V three matchmaking system, like ranked PVP mode has been in a non ranked mode since November. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's something overall. And then I think that one of the biggest things about BDO is the beauty in this game is the fighting system and the combat and how fast it is and how action paced it is. But it is also the game's biggest weakness because of the technical demands that go into making a system like that flow well. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do think that server performance, as we all see every single night in node wars and things like that, they play more and more into larger scale, larger scale, but the game generally like is not able to handle the load. The servers are not prepared for it. I'm pretty sure they're on the same server hardware they were in 2016 when they launched. I don't think they've done much in terms of bolstering or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do think that overall, just the technical hardware capabilities of the game to be able to make it able to handle the large scale player side of it. And in a game where these frame is important based on the combat. So Whether you're in a super armor, which means that no crowd control effects will take effect on you, or you're in an iframe, which means that no damage will take effect on you on top of no crowd control effects, or you're unprotected. Um, All of that stuff very much goes into the wayside at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So I would really like to see that be ironed out with the new servers and stuff. And it's stuff that they've been talking about for a long time, but I just hope it comes into practice soon because... As good as the Node War system is, if it's not fun because the game can't handle it, then nobody's going to have a good time. Yeah, yeah, that's generally, I think, my biggest thing when I play the game is I just wish its performance would be updated with modern times because I feel like mm-hmm. we're at a very different time period in terms of technology than we were in 2016. And um, I definitely think, like, if there is anything that I could wish would happen tomorrow for BDO, it's like, one, the, I guess there's like, a double terrible thing about this because frames are important for your character's performance, which I think is messed up. That that shit is whack, right? Like the more yeah, your frames you yeah. have, the faster your character goes. That is whack. Um, and then the frames are terrible on the game, right? So it's like it's a double whammy. Um, yeah, performance. Yeah, a lot of code. us are playing on twenty twenty or newer multi thousand dollar computers and struggling to pull a hundred frames in a game that came out in twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah. So my my other biggest thing if i were to say like uh the thing that i think would be most interesting i think we talked about this briefly in in some other time but i really like to your point i really like smaller scale fights um especially because i think this is something that's a lot more manageable for a netcode improvement right like sometimes in the big kind of like mass node wars as fun as they are sometimes there's just a mishmash of blurs, right? You kind of like mm-hmm. are smashing your keys, you're lagging, you're rubber banding, right? And it's kind of like, I'm alive and now I'm dead. And then that's kind of like the interaction. But the Guild League, right? The 10v10s, or maybe even you could push it up to 15v15 or whatever it is, right? I feel like that's a game mode that I could see in the future being very manageable and having like much better connection and kind of being much easier on performance. I would love to see them add modes for 10v10 or Guild League that are kind of like objective focus, right? I think the thing that we were talking about was Guild Wars 1, right? I would love to see them try some Tevi 10 modes that are a little bit more interesting other than just beat the shit out of the other guild. Yeah, I think that that would be great. Um, There is like the red battlefield side of (laughs) PvP, um, but it is uncapped content, which unfortunately with how large the gap is between a new player and a geared player in this game and how much it makes a difference, Mm. Um, it's hard to approach 
what I would love to see is AOS get some bolstered movements and maybe some more creative maps. Um, I think that having like a 1v1 arena would be fun. Mm-hmm. I think 3v3 is great. I think that putting in a 5v5 mode would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in those modes, like a 10v10, and then allowing for diversity in the maps where there are objective based gameplay. And Red Battlefield honestly could just be scrapped, it's antiquated. Um, it's very easy to play for it and abuse it with the way that mm-hmm. it works. Um, so I do think that Arena of Sol- and there's no real accolades with it, um, mm-hmm. which is something that a lot of people play for. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of just the fun of PvP in general, people want to do PvP that is rewarding for them and rewarding for their account, and the Red Battlefield rewards and stuff are very outdated, um, along with most systems in this game. They're very antiquated with the current economy, the inflation of things, and how much it actually pays for the amount of time you're investing in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that PvP on a scale should be equivalent to PvE. Mm-hmm. If that is the type of gameplay that you prefer to participate in, I think that you should be rewarded on an equal level as someone who likes to just go run and kill mobs all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that needs to be something that is like a, you know, a shocking take or yeah. anything. I think that people should be able to play the game in that they, way that they want to play it to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think just overall rewards in the game in general, I think could be addressed. Um, I know they have a lot of these things on their plate. And they're aware of them and they're working on them. Uh, but, you know, each day that goes by, there's new content, new gear coming out and things like that. And the current things that are in place are just completely not relevant to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Um, is there anything you think we missed about this new system that would be important to share? Um, not particularly. I think that overall, I would just say that everyone should just keep an open mind to remain optimistic. They are, you know, looking at things and feedback and willing to change it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's going to put an interesting new emphasis on how we build our parties out. Player composition, I think, is going to matter a little bit more mm-hmm. um, because it's now a lot more defensively sided because now your win condition is defense instead of your win condition being offense. True, um, yeah. To an extent, right? Because, like, you know, you want to be able to take that base and hold it confidently, which means that grab classes are going to be a big up. Um, mm-hmm. Having healing core, like a lot of Valkyries will probably be really strong because they have the ability to throw protected area on people, heal people, um, mm-hmm. and then the large scale AoE damage that they deal and stuff. So I think that it'll be interesting to see how the comp changes with people and what the new meta classes are going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for it. I don't think that there's anything major that we missed in the discussion. Mm-hmm. um so yeah i think that kind of sums it up here no well, this has been super good no worry about <laughs> this has been super good um it's super fun always chatting with you uh maybe we'll do more of this if you had fun um and if there are other interesting topics we can have like have a casual chat and then uh you know just talk about bdo things i feel like it's uh it's always interesting to hear your perspective and other people's as well so i'm super happy you came on yeah, absolutely. I was happy to uh, participate and I appreciate you asking. I'm always willing to share kind of what my brain is thinking about the game and the changes and things like that and trying to look at things from multiple perspectives and see not only how I feel about them, but how the community as a whole is impacted and stuff. So I'm always happy to have a chat. Cool, cool. Well, I think that's about it for now. Um, I'm sure I'll talk to you later um, in future Node Wars and stuff like that and just in general. Yeah. But uh, thanks so much, man. Absolutely, man. Not a problem. All right. Have a good one. You too, Randy. Thanks.